Welcome to Can Fish Live With Your Pet Turtle. Choose your turtle. Redyard Slider Herald. Choose your fish mates. The Convict. The Sucker. Three choices. Round one, live. <laughs> Long Live Your Turtle here, welcome to the second installment of Can Fish Live With Your Pet Turtle. In the first video of this installment, I gave several different species that would go excellent with your turtle in your tank. However, there's obviously pros and cons for basically every single type of fish you're going to try. We tried out some rosy red minnows and some goldfish, and unfortunately we had to mourn the rosy red minnows and the goldfish. However, I think today's options are going to do excellent. And there's a couple reasons for that. <laughs> Number one, and to be fair, or I guess unfair, when I did my first video with those rosy red minnows and those goldfish, I had three slider turtles in here and even less places for them to hide. So it was going to be a pretty difficult survival situation for those fish. Now, since then, I've added a couple more decorations and I've actually removed two of my turtles and they're now in a turtle tub somewhere else. So now it's just Harold in here and I think she is ready for some fish mates. So like I explained in my last video, turtles are pretty aggressive in tanks and they basically think that any fish or even like rocks are food and they're gonna try them. And of course this depends on your turtle's general temperament. You can have turtles that are very aggressive and will just chase a fish around until they get out of breath, get their breath back and continue to chase this fish until they get their snack. You can also have a turtle that just kind of sits around and waits for your fish to come by its face and maybe it'll take a, a lazy bite, but those are gonna be turtles that are way easier to house fish with. Another great strategy for introducing fish is to introduce them when your turtle is very young, and then your turtle will get a little more used to the fish that are around while your turtle grows up. Now, I don't really have that luxury, but I think the fish choices we have today are gonna to do excellent. So let's get to our first choice. Our first choice of fish is going to be the convict cichlid. Convict cichlids are part of a 2000 plus different species of fish in the cichlid family. What makes cichlids awesome is they have all sorts of different cool colorizations, different shapes, different sizes. Many of the breeds can be quite aggressive and territorial, which is always really fun to watch. And many of the breeds also are excellent at taking care of their brood. And the mating pair will actually protect their brood with their life. So they can get quite aggressive in this manner. Now I'm specifically putting the convict cichlid in this tank. What's awesome about convict cichlids, they're aggressive. This trait makes them very aware, very agile, and kind of ready to defend their territory, which is excellent for a hunter killer like Harold here, who is going to be chasing them at least for a little while. So hopefully they'll catch on to that and keep their distance. Now another really important trait is they are really hardy fish and they're easy to take care of. What this means is they can handle degradation of water quality for short periods of time because of this hardiness. As you know, or you will know, they produce a lot of waste, so water quality can drop drastically, and you want a fish that will be able to survive drops like this temporarily, and the convict cichlid is excellent for this. So another thing that's really cool about convict cichlids, but also something I need to watch out for, is they are extremely proficient at breeding, and it takes very little for them to be like, yo, let's make a brood and let's protect this brood with our lives, which means they will be uber territorial and they will chase and fight and do whatever with their own species, with other species, even turtles. So I need to keep a really close eye on if breeding pairs do happen. And I don't want them stressing out Harold so much that Harold is, becomes unhealthy, is just stuck in like one little corner of the tank because they're so territorial. We're going to keep track of that and we're going to make sure that that's not a problem. Otherwise, these fish will have to find a new home. So convict cichlids are going to stake their territory. They love to burrow around in sand, but they also like cave-like structure and places to hide. So I have driftwood in here and I have this turtle-proof decoration. It's turtle-proof because Harold can't move this around. It's stuck like that. And I have a video actually showing how I made a turtle-proof decoration. You should check that out. But I am hoping that these vases here will create great caves for our cichlid friends. All right, so our second contender and potential roommate for Harold here is going to be the Hypostomus 
Plecostomus, and I'm absolutely sure I said that wrong, but they are otherwise known as the common pleco, or the great suckerfish. Just kidding, I added the great because common is just, it's just so sad, so sad. But as the nickname suggests, these common pleco, so common, they have a sucker-like mouth. They can adhere to the glass or different ornaments in your tank or food. And in my opinion, it's pretty cool. So these suckerfish have armor-like plate scoots on their head and on the back of their body. And these help protect them, which can be a great trait for our tank here with a turtle. In general, these guys are from the catfish family, so they're extremely hardy and they can take water quality swings like we talked about before, uh, pH levels or different temperatures. And they're a little aggressive, so they're not gonna be totally docile and not know what to do with another predator in the tank. So something pet stores don't tell you and a lot of people make the mistake of is common plecos can get up to 16 inches long plus. So that is a humongous fish. And it's just important to be aware of that for the tanks that you're planning to have in the future. Right now they're only about two inches, so they have a lot of growing to do. And this is a 75 gallon aquarium, so they have tons of space in here. Plecos are omnivorous, they'll eat all sorts of things. They'll eat plants, crustaceans, fish. So they're super not picky eaters. And they'll even eat algae. So one thing people get plecos for is to clean algae off their tank, because algae can start to build up and look terrible on the tank glass. But you should also know that these guys will create a lot of waste. So while they might be cleaning that algae off the tank, they'll also be pooping a lot and they might affect your nitrogen cycle. So just make sure you have a lot of filtration going on. I have a turtle, so I am super confident that I have plenty of filtration to handle the waste that is produced by these plecos. But all this talking, the convicts are anxious, the plecos are anxious, and Harold's anxious to see what it's like to live together. Let's get these guys in the tank. I'm gonna acclimate them to the water. I'm gonna add them all at the same time, hopefully to kind of create a little chaos for Harold so she maybe has a hard time figuring out where to go and what to eat and hopefully tires herself out enough that these fish can get themselves settled in their new home. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's get the fish in the tank. Round one, live. So I told you there's gonna be a bonus addition to this and my addition is going to be 10. Oh, so I know I was leaving you hanging, but here's the bonus add to our little community that we have going on right now. I'm gonna add 10 baby ram's horn snails. Now these are from an aquarium at work that just has an overpopulation of little snails. So doing a little housekeeping and I'm gonna move them from that house to this house, which luckily for a fish tank, Snails do a great job at cleaning. However, unluckily for our snails, our turtle Harold, our convict cichlids, and our plecos would love a nice tasty baby snail snack. So I'm gonna toss them in the tank. Hopefully they do well. Who knows? Let's do it. Woo, let go, oh. All right, coast is clear so far. Everyone is accounted for. I'll check back in a week, let you guys know how it goes. All right, you guys, this is really exciting. It's been one week since I put the four cichlids, the two suckerfish, and about 10 little snails into our 75 gallon aquarium with my red eared slider, Harold. And that one week period is critical because if these fish survived that full week, it's really safe to say that they will probably be long lasting members of our new community tank. So let's cross our fingers and let's take a close look at what's going on in this tank. All right, let's see what's going on in the tank. Let's see who's doing what. Oh, over here. All right, we already have two of our convict cichlids coming out, seeing what I'm doing. So these are awesome fish just because they're so interactive. So curious. They've been hanging out in this driftwood a lot. I've been keeping an eye on these fish all week, of course. 
They've actually been hanging out in the vases a lot too. Don't know if anyone's in there right now. Oh, so there's a number three convict Cichlid doing great. Yeah, he's been hanging out around the vases. As those two are back again. What's up guys? Oh yeah, check him out. He's got his little territory. Oh, watch out friends, go get him. Now I'm gonna be honest guys, we did lose one of the sucker fish and it was on that first day, I actually watched it happen. It was a little heartbreaking because Jaws Herald came up behind the sucker fish. Sucker fish didn't even bat an eye at this major threat and Harold got a big bite in and it was over. But I do have one sucker fish who's doing awesome. He learned immediately to keep distance from that turtle. So he's been kind of sneaking around the driftwood a lot and sucking on places with great cover. So in this back corner, you can see here, I have a lot of driftwood. I have a big sponge filter and I have some plants. This is actually where all the fish will kind of congregate when Harold is being a little feisty because there's a lot of cover over here and it's been a great place to kind of de-stress and just hide. So that worked out well. But yeah, those vases did great. They're gonna all gonna grow quite a bit bigger, especially the pleco, of course. Everyone's gonna get a little more comfortable with each other in time and they probably won't have to hide quite a bit as much. All right, this is so cool. We have four cichlids, they're staking out their territories and they're doing just fine in this tank. They're using all those natural instincts. They are surviving that constant onslaught because they are used to it in their natural environment. Unfortunately, we did lose one of the sucker fish, RIP sucker fish, but on a positive note, the other sucker fish did figure out, I need to stay away from that red eared slyer beak and it's been doing great in the tank. So hopefully he grows up to be a big old sucker. In the spirit of the games, convicts, cichlids, and sucker fish win. Excellent. Well done, convicts. Well done, sucker. Good luck, snails. Thanks for watching. To answer the question on the whole video, can fish live with your turtle? This is proof that these fish can with this turtle. It's awesome when you can put together a little community tank for your turtle. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have comments, throw them in the comments section. If you have suggestions for future community fish that might possibly go well in this tank or in a turtle tub, with two other sliders, throw in the comments as well. My next video is gonna be how I built the basking platform that you see on the left there. And if you're interested in that, definitely stay tuned for that video. Otherwise, thanks for all the support for this channel. It really keeps me going and I'm gonna keep making videos. And hopefully those videos are something you enjoy because I actually enjoy making them. So see ya.